Hello and welcome to the El Nuclear channel. It's been a while since I've done a video and uh, if I'm going to make one, it's going to be about something I'm passionate about, something I've been thinking about. So I have a subject that I hope will be helpful to some and uh, it's a semi-comparison video um, having to do with the Project X series. I have had the Project X1 for about two years and I think it's a fine table. It works very well with my particular setup. Um, I had the opportunity to audition an X2, which I have sitting right here. I have now spent quite a bit of time with it. I have compared both tables using the same cartridge, using the upgraded subplatter on both, and I've come up with some pretty interesting ideas based on what I've heard. And like I said, it's a semi-comparison video because we know the differences between these two tables if you're familiar with the X-Series, and if you're watching this video, you probably are. There's been quite a bit of marketing on this particular X-Series because now they are upgrading once again, or changing. They are adding a balanced input to these tables, which is a great idea, very, very interesting. Not very common for turntables to have uh, a balanced connection as opposed to just having RCA. Could be interesting to see how quiet a delivery you might be able to achieve with that. Great marketing, slightly devious maybe, but also a good idea. So kudos to Project for coming up with interesting ideas. One thing I want to start out with is just to say that the X1 and X2 are both solid, excellent, and beautifully made tables. There is no complaint about the quality. What I want to emphasize is that compatibility is very important. I've talked about it before. Um, it's not about how much money you spend as much as it's about how well your components work together. Don't be romanced by the more expensive, better version of something. It doesn't mean it's, like I said, well, I said better. It isn't necessarily better. It might be more expensive. It might be bigger. It might have more advanced components. But it doesn't mean that it's going to sound better with your setup. So when you're considering spending money, and it's expensive to upgrade equipment, as we all know, we get to a certain level, it gets more and more expensive, especially now. So if you like what you have, if you're content with your sound, don't mess with it. Don't be so quick to upgrade something thinking it's going to make your system better to you. It might not, and it might send you into a black hole of more spending and searching once again for that elusive sound that you're looking for in your head. If what you have gives you an emotional response, if your music sounds to the point where you get a tear in your eye when you hear your favorite part in a song, whatever it is that gives you that joy, if you have it, leave it alone. Start with that. The X2 sounds wonderful. And in someone else's house, with someone else's equipment, it might sound better than the X1. But in my house, the X1 wins. The X1 sounds significantly better to me. Maybe it's my room. Maybe it's my signal chain. The equipment I'm using with it, which is pretty much all Rotel equipment and Martin Logan speakers. I love all that stuff. It all works very well. It's all very compatible with, the, with itself, with, the, with those particular things. They work well together. The X1 was a compliment. For whatever reason, all of it sounded glorious together. No complaints. So why would I consider the X2? The X2 comes from the same company. It's one step above the X1 in terms of the line. It's very similar in its specifications. It's larger, there are a few subtle upgrades, but it's in essence the same technology. So I felt it was a safe bet that it would be a little bit of an improvement. 
But in reality, it is not. The highs, high mids and highs are harsh. The sound is brittle comparatively. On the top end, it's just not as smooth. The overall warmth is not as pleasurable as the X1 was delivering. This is in my environment, okay, which is a mid-sized room with the equipment I've just discussed with you briefly. But I want to emphasize that it's not about that as much as it's about just the general philosophy that if you like your sound, don't be captivated by marketing that bigger and more expensive means better. It's so important to realize that it's that tempting facet of audio of audiophile obsession can be very, very disappointing. This is not a large difference, okay? We're not, you know, in, in, if we're really looking at things from, a, from a, a, a baseline standpoint, I'm not talking about dramatically better or worse. To most ears, it would be subtle, but I do hear very significant amounts of shrillness and lack of warmth with the X1 if I compare it to the X2. If I didn't have that baseline and just heard the X2 by itself, I might just be bowled over by it. But I thought the X1 sounded better. So that's what I wanted to really focus in on is not the aspect of which is a better table, it's which is a better table for you. Both are nice, incredibly well constructed, but do what's best for your room, your budget, and your ears. What is going to give you that emotional response? And if you have it, if you have worked towards getting to a point where you love your sound and you got there, don't be tempted to change anything. Try to enjoy what you have, be in the moment, and don't spend any more money. So this is what I wanted to compro this is what I wanted to emphasize in the context of a comparison between the X1 and the X2. Very similar tables, but I was getting a little bit better quality delivery of the overall frequency range using the X1. Thank you very much. Please subscribe, hit the like button. I don't really say that very much, but I'm saying it now. Be nice to have a few more subscribers. I hope this was helpful to some people who go through this psychology. I go through it. I know a lot of people go through it. So thank you so much for listening. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.